happen at the Romo Fijo on Saturday, September the 28th. You can go to rocketmortgagefieldhouse.com for tickets, info, and everything else. Not sure who's with them, but maybe they'll have that uh, information there. But these two tickets for you if you're caller 10, too, for 21 Pilots. Good luck. Caller 10, 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Press the yellow button to begin enjoying your Allen. What is an Allen? The Allen Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Six ten tonight is that uh, second game, Guardians White Sox around the corner at Progressive Field. So we'll dip out a couple minutes early. This is the second of three. They will play them again, but tomorrow at six ten, I think tomorrow's game is going to be on WTAM because we will have the Cavaliers for you uh, here on the Buzzard as they get into their last home stretch of the regular season. The Cavs will play. Uh, Memphis tomorrow night at 7. They'll host the Pacers on Friday night and then Sunday afternoon, 1 o'clock tip-off uh, against the Charlotte Hornets. And um, the Cavs have lost three in a row, knocked down a bit in the standings. Yeah, I think they're sixth seed right now. They are fifth right fifth, now. Fifth, yep. Okay. Below the Knicks, Magic, Bucks, and Celtics. So Cavs basketball tomorrow night, but tonight, 6-10, Guardians, White Sox, uh, here on the buzzard. We'll get you right into the first pitch there shortly after 10 o'clock. You do not want to F around in a country where people are so heavily armed. Oh, uh, just to be clear, I'm talking about this one. Yeah, I knew. I knew. Thank you. Especially in Texas uh, where, boy, you just, you got to keep your head on the swivel. So they were able to unravel what this was about. There was a guy who was robbing a couple at a gas station. And so a witness, a bystander, uh, drew and killed the guy. But they determined that the guy who was holding up the couple were staging it as part of an immigration scam to get a visa. And my mind immediately, before I saw the story about, like, where this was a scam or whatever, my mind immediately went to somebody doing a TikTok prank got shot and killed. Mm -hmm. Right? Because somebody's always filming something for the lulls. And in Texas, you know, anywhere. Let's say anywhere. I mean, this happened in Texas. But anywhere. People just walking around packing. A lot of states. You don't need a permit open carry you don't know what the hell is going on and this guy thought he was doing uh helping everybody out he goes hey look at that that guy's he could have just as easily uh, uh, uh packed up and took off but they were staging it i didn't understand the immigration scam uh, but this attorney yeah uh, i don't get how that kind of explains it what is, like, the person qualifies for a work permit while they are waiting for a resolution of the case. So they say, okay, so what would happen if somebody beat me up or if if I was a victim of domestic violence? People don't realize the big mess they are getting into by lying and making things up. So if you get, if you're the victim of a crime, this is what they were trying to do. These two people told this dude to pretend to rob them at this gas station. And as the guy finished the robbery, uh, ran away. And a bystander shot him and killed him. And so then uh, the couple has to come clean and go, we were, we were trying to stage this robbery because if you were the victim of a crime, you could file a report with the cops, which in itself would be filing a false report. And, you know, if you get... So that's one count of something. And then you could apply for a visa while that, you know, these cases move so slowly, especially in immigration. Any kind of immigration case uh, moves at a glacial pace. It's like that uh, molasses flood yeah. that that Irish guy was singing to Mary about. I made up. <laughs> and uh, these people are like, oh, well, we'll file a report. That we were victims of a robbery, 
and then we'll get a work permit. This is how great it is, some people will tell you. This is how great it is uh, to be in these United States. They go, hey, we're having a hard time getting a work visa. Could you just come over here? They're still trying to do it the right way in a way. You know, people are always like, I don't care if they come to America. Just do it the right way. Well, they were trying to follow trying one of the visa. Loophole, loopholes. Is a loophole? <laughs> America, the yeah, yeah, yeah we're a loophole. They don't love taxes. They haven't closed them. They, they, they like loopholes when it comes to taxes and stuff. They go, oh, you'd be dumb not to use the loophole. That's right. It makes you very smart mm-hmm. if you find a way not to pay taxes. But if you try to find a way, wait. America, America, America. Dude, you understand? America, America, America. My point is America. America's first. So they were, uh, that was the whole uh, uh, plan there. They got text messages from the guy's phone between him and the guy that they had asked to fake rob them. When you done, make all of it look real. One of the texts said. It did look real. <laughs> it looked really it real. It looked real. Like that, I mean, he nailed it. Yeah. It looked like a real. So he did exactly what they asked him to do. They said that these same two people staged numerous other robberies going back to last year. Helping people get... They had like a little cottage industry. So plenty of other people got visas this way. One took place at a Northeast Houston gas station earlier this year where he pretended to rob the cashier. And so, you know, these immigration lawyers... That's going to make it sticky, too, if you're an immigration lawyer, because there are a lot of people who, you know, it's not cheap, obviously, but there's a lot of people who are trying to do it very much by the book. But you're kind of bobbing and weaving, too, with this kind of stuff. We're like, now you've told me everything you need to tell me, yes? Yes, yes. There's nothing you're leaving out? No, no. Have you ever been the victim of a crime? (laughs) Yes, I have. I've been held up every month at the same gas station. It just keeps Happening. You'd think I'd find like another place to fill Simpsons. up. Yeah. Yeah. Snake every week. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. <laughs> so, yeah, these, um, you know, they got into trouble. But, again, you just don't know some dude, because you know, all these guys, there's plenty, not all of them, but a lot of them are like, yeah, I pack it, but I hope I don't ever have to use it. They can't wait to use it. They're dying to use it. And I don't ever want to. This wanna... is the greatest day of this guy's life. It's weird that people want to hurt other people and they have those kind of fantasies. I saw Civil War last night. Oh, how was that? It was really good. But the violence in it isn't cartoony or spectacular. Yeah, it's depressing. It's really sad. It's very visceral. It's very honest. And it just. It, like everybody dying. There's they, they don't really describe the politics of the situation. It's kind of implied who the guy is that you know the the tyrannical yeah. president and everything like that. Nick Offerman plays him in the movie. Yeah, that's and pretty he, wild. And he, he doesn't have a lot of lines or anything like that. It's 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 not uh, that kind of movie. It it is front lines of a war. At, a nation at war with itself, and there's all these different factions, so you never really know who is what most right. of the time. But it's really jarring. I don't like movies like that. It's it's so good though. Like it's so it's very powerful because it it really just shows like the horrors of war, and it just makes me sad that people are willing to do that to other humans over stuff that it 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 just doesn't seem like it's worth hurting anybody over. Hmm. But then but there's people that are there. There's a lot of people that are they're, they're like so excited to hurt somebody over or something. Well, there's a lot of messed up people in the world. Yeah. But well, and the they spent all that money on all that gear. Right. I mean, you can't just Obviously. have it hanging in your shed mm-hmm. or in your bunker. You need to get out there and use it. I feel like a lot of times too, they're not brainwashed, but they're led to believe that whatever they're fighting for is the right cause or will Absolutely. ultimately end up good. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's not necessarily that they're – I'm sure there are plenty of people who are eager to kill another human being, but I think it's all – there's a lot of exterior factors too. Mm-hmm. I wonder how you – I wonder what the demarcation line is for brainwashing. What constitutes being brainwashed? Because nobody Wait. thinks they are. I mean yeah. – but people go, oh, he's brainwashed. 
But that is a thing. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder, I wonder what the what the specifics of that are. I mean, I'm curious. I, I don't know exactly how it goes, but I, definitely what I went through as, as a child and, and what I was taught, they didn't think of it as brainwashing because they're like, oh, we're teaching them truth. That's indoctrination. But, it, but it's indoctrination. And how different is indoctrination from brainwashing? I don't think it's very different at all. But that's children. I mean, I grew up Catholic, too. Yeah. And so when you, when you take kids and religion and whatever, I mean, parents are just teaching them what they learned. It's like a mm-hmm. chain. You know, this is how we grew up and this is how you're going to grow and blah, blah, blah. And everybody, you, you know, you get to the age of reason or beyond or become an adult and you figure it out for yourself. But I mean, adults, right? grown people walking around. Um, but it's I, a good movie. Is it, it, It's it not was, too long, is it? No, it's not long at all. It's, okay. it's under two hours. All right. And it moves. You know, there's. There's a lot of different set pieces, and they they move it pretty quickly. It's it's very very tense. Like it is a tense movie. It's got an ending though, Mary. So I was gonna like say I, I, I have like to assume ending. it has yeah. a vague ending. No, it's it's not very vague at all. No, oh, like, okay. It's very specific about uh, <laughs> uh, what happens. And uh, all right, I'm so I, bummed that I really I, I really liked it, and I I would uh, say if you want like an adult. Like, I don't even want to call it an action movie because it's more of a thrill and, like, I don't know. It's, it's Almost like really a good. faux documentary. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, but shot that way, it looks like. I mean, it not it, it, it's not shot by, like, it's not like shaky cam or, like, a, a journalist is doing all the filming. Like, it's it's filmed like a, a movie, but you're following journalists that are documenting what's happening. They go from New York to... And the highways are all destroyed, so they have to go all the way out to uh, Pittsburgh and then back down to try and get to Washington, D.C. Oh, I see. And it's real good. In, I don't want to get hey, too much Hey, you got any bullets? Yeah. You inside of bullets? <laughs> there was a part where they, oh, go, no. they go under an overpass and it says, go Steelers, and I go, boo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was, I- it was an interesting film, and it, it was – Really well done. It's Opens on very Friday, intense. Yeah. yeah, very very intense. Well, and I well like, acted. Too. I like Alex Garland a lot. Yeah, I like that dude. He does a lot of good work. Well, he did Ex Machina. Yeah, I never saw Annihilation. I know people love Annihilation. Kind of, a lot of people didn't love Annihilation. Oh, I love yeah. Annihilation. So, oh, come on. So I think you'll like this one a lot. It was, like I said, the violence is very authentic and ve- it, it feels like you are in a war zone. And they actually killed people for the movie. <laughs> I mean, I know. <laughs> they got they Fat Damon and uh, Kirsten Dunst, too. Wow. And he's always menacing. Yeah. I'm so pissed. I dragged my feet, and now Dune is not in IMAX anymore because there's new movies coming in. Yeah. Right? We're hitting the summer I'm season. I'm so mad because I still haven't seen Dune 2, and now I'm going to have to watch it on, Mary, are you ready? A ready. regular size screen. Oh. The Indignity. How could you? The, the worst millionaire ind- ever. <laughs> Shut up. Why don't you build an IMAX? The indignity. Um, because my wife already thinks I, I, I say I too much, Bill. Ah, oh, I gotcha. Uh, I so, statements. The Jam. movie I'm talking about, by the way, is called Civil War. It's Civil uh, War, yes. Alex Garland, Kirsten Dunst. And, it's uh, the biggest movie that A24 has done so far. Like, the, the biggest budget movie. It's getting really done. good reviews. It's very good. Yeah. It And again, it is... Pretty intense. Mm-hmm. Now, and, if you make sure that you uh, uh, don't uh, mistype it, because if you come up with CeCe's War, that's the documentary about the pizza place, I believe. A- am I correct on that? That wasn't a war. That was a bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, so much fighting over a place. I don't know how it stays in business, but somehow it Is does. Is it still in business? Yeah, we saw one in Florida. Well, CeCe's Flor- Florida Pizza. Florida count. It's a, it's a <laughs> place in the country. Yeah. You'll see in Civil War. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, boy. That's they, the, the one thing they, they saw they, the peninsula off the rest of the mainland? No, they just don't go into how it, like, the the Western forces is the main uh, group that they're following. Right. And it's California and Texas teamed up. Oh, but they yeah. don't explain how that. Happened. I was gonna say, yeah. okay, first of all, you already lost me, right? right? Well, it's it's just because they're they're trying to make it kind of ambiguous, 
they just they they're just showing that the country's fractured. There's all these different factions, and yeah, then there's a lot of people just sitting it out. But there there there's something happened with this uh, this president that made them team up, and they go, okay, we got to stop this guy, and uh, they got to. They oh, they've teamed up down. against him. Yeah, I see. Yeah. But there are people on his side, too, I have to assume, in this. Yes. Yeah. We have there a lot people. of people in this country way into yeah. fascism. Mm-hmm. All right. And they're not the first. You students of history yawn at those kinds of things. Hey, do you see Mary got kicked out of a Goodwill? Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I did in Indiana. That's the hardest okay. Goodwill to get kicked out of, too. And Dude. why are you in a Goodwill? Listen, I didn't go there on my own volition. My brother was vacationing in Indianapolis from Louisville with his daughters. His twin daughters are 10. They're super into thrift stores right now. Thrift stores are like the coolest thing ever. I don't know if this is going on on TikTok or what, but like thrift stores and vintage stores, they're really, really into. So we went to a couple vintage stores, which are just expensive thrift stores. I don't know if you've been to a vintage store lately, but it's a place where a a T-shirt that looks like it came from uh, Urban Outfitters is $54 because it says Rolling Stones on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's vintage. Yeah. So we went to a couple vintage stores, and it was all obviously too expensive for a 10-year-old. So we went to a Goodwill. Okay? And I'm looking. There's huge. It's a giant Goodwill in Indianapolis. And we're, I'm looking through. I grabbed a couple dresses. I usually get, like, sundresses and stuff like that from a thrift store because they're usually less than $10. You know, it's just something to throw on over a bathing suit or something. And um, I had, like, four dresses, and I walked over to this one lady, an associate, and I was like, hey, I don't see any of you guys, like, fitting rooms. Like, do you guys have any fitting rooms? And she was like, no, we closed them all down after COVID. I was like, oh, so we're not allowed to try anything on. You just kind of got to buy it. And she, like, looked around, like, looked over her shoulders. And at first I was like, oh, she's about to say something racist. Like, what is she about? Because that's, like, the only time you see an older lady look over their shoulders. Um, But she was like, listen. Take those in the bathroom. You didn't see my name tag, and I didn't see you. I said, okay. So I took them in the bathroom. What the hell does that mean? That means, like, I'll just go try them on and don't tell anybody, basically. So I took them in the bathroom, and I was trying them on. And, I mean, I was probably in there, like, 10 minutes or so. And um, No, not a single one of them. Um, But I'm going to come out of the bathroom, and I have the four items with me, and this other lady a much younger lady bursts in through the door and goes did you pay for those items and i was like no i just was trying them on and she goes well this is not a fitting room and i need you to leave and i was like i was just i didn't see a fitting room so i just brought them in here to try them on so that way i knew if they fit before we bought them she goes you're trying to steal from us and i don't appreciate you lying about it like freaking out on me i was like lady i'm not trying to steal i just wanted to try them on and she was like, that's it. You know better. You're a grown woman. Get out of this store. You're not welcome here. You're never allowed to come back. Like, she is <laughs> losing her mind. You are not me. welcome in the Indiana Goodwill. Goodwill. And she so you didn't, this- throw the, the, you didn't throw the other lady under the bus? No, because I didn't think that that was a nice thing to do. Because she was she had to be in her 70s. And I'm like, if Understood, you're- but it, it could have been as simple like, I completely misunderstood your colleague. Well, no, no. She kind of pointed me over here, but I must have misunderstood her. But if you weren't going to buy anything, who cares? Yeah. She's 70 years old, probably. She's in her 70s. She was an old lady. So my thing was, if you're that old, you either want that job because you love it or you need that job. And if this old lady's working at Goodwill, I'm not going to get her fired or get her in trouble. You know, like I never I the fact that I was there to begin with doesn't matter. I'm never going to go back there again. So I didn't think it was worth it. Well, you're not allowed. You're banned. Well, yeah. <laughs> banned. But I'm saying in general, I didn't think it was worth it to get that other lady in trouble. I see. But Over I some a- Rolling Stones t-shirts. Yeah, over a couple dresses. Mm-hmm. But this lady was furious, okay? And my brother had his MAGA hat on that day. So I come out. She's throwing me out. She's screaming, there's a sign posted. You know better than this. You wow. And this is a younger she's, woman, you said? She's probably in her 40s, younger than the 70-year-old. Right. But still, that's not old. She's not much older than me. No. And thief, thief, and my brother has his MAGA hat on, and he has his shirt off trying on a shirt in the middle of the Goodwill. And I'm like, we look like the worst people on the you planet. You look like the most Indiana <laughs> people that, like, right. you look fine. He's got his shirt off. He's got his belly out, trying on a different Hawaiian shirt. I'm getting thrown out, being called a thief. And um, 
those two are exchanging something and he i heard him say like on my way out like hey we're not from here sorry our in our well, goodwill has a fitting room she didn't try to she's not trying to steal blah blah blah, blah. but the lady where like, i'm from we can out. try them out on the roof <laughs> <laughs> basically but yeah she like followed me out and um i had to just sit outside while my nieces and my sister-in-law shot my brother came out with me and he's laughing so hard. He's like, dude, I've never seen a grown person thrown out of a place before. Of course. Like, he's like, for not being a indignant. A goodwill. Or like, yes, like not, he's like, you weren't causing problems. You weren't fighting you with were anybody. You were trying to steal. I wasn't trying to steal. That's According to that lady, you're going to, I would like to hear her side of the story because you said you're not trying to steal. But we don't know. No There's two sides stealing. to every story. She saw someone committing a crime. And every said, single person, every store. single person who gets caught says they're not trying to steal. But it's, but it's also not like you weren't trying to spear it away a coach bag. No, it was a seven dollar dress that someone else probably died in. Every like, dollar what, counts at Goodwill. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I posted on my Instagram and I put up a poll: like, would you have t- tattled on the other associate, or would you have just left quietly, like I did? And um. It was almost 50-50. Really? It's not a high-stakes situation. I mean. But I couldn't believe that that many people were willing to be like, this old woman did me wrong. <laughs> yeah. get, her, get her in trouble. Gladys like, did great. me dirty. Yeah. Wow. So I'm now banned from the Indianapolis Goodwill. Wow. <laughs> I didn't take my picture or anything, but I definitely You know what that sounds back. like to me, Bill? A lack of goodwill. <laughs>